Work and stress often go hand in hand, but a new survey from Headspace says more people are seeing the health impacts of workplace stress. In fact, the survey found that three out of four people have either gained weight or experienced other physical issues due to work stress. Joining us now to discuss is Jackie Taylor, entrepreneurial wellness coach and founder of Business Boost Society. Good to have you with us. How are you? Thanks for having me on, Chris. All right, so let's talk about this. Many people in this survey said that their workplace stress continues outside of work. So I guess my question to you is why do so many people, when they leave the office doors, take that stress with them at home and let them affect them there? Yeah, you know, very much it's sometimes the positive reason that we hired employees can also be their Achilles heel, right? They're dedicated, they're passionate and excited. And very often that excitement tends to spill over, you know, after the work hour. So employees will take work home. But I think it's really essentially the balance between how much you have to take home versus how much you're kind of self-imposing from a pressure standpoint. I think it also has to do, obviously, with the environment, with what you're dealing with. Do you have kids at home or are you single? So do you have nothing else to think about but work and your boss either emailing you or calling you? Or do you have outside distractions? Are you young? Are you a little bit more mature? Do you have more life experiences to fall back on? Are those a lot of the key factors you're seeing? I think those are all the key factors. And, you know, unlike years past, today, everybody has something that they are juggling at home, whether you are a new entrant into the workforce or dealing with the sandwich generation, handling your kids and your parents. Everybody has something. Chris, I always say, if we pick the roof off of anybody's house, you have an entire reality TV show going on in everybody's home. I mean, you know, it's funny. I almost use this, a similar analogy. I always tell people, you drive down a beautiful cul-de-sac. Every house looks great on the outside until you walk in that front door. <laughs> and that is so true. Everybody's got something. I try to say that all the time when people say, well, I'm dealing with this, I'm dealing with that. I'm like, you know what? We all got issues. It's how we are able to deal with them. And that's where you come in. And companies can also encourage their employees to set healthy boundaries. So what are some of those like? What does that look like, that boundary between work life and personal life? Yeah, I think the first thing is awareness. And so I myself, um, I'm in the business field. I'm not in the mental health field, but I got first aid certified. And even the study that we're pointing to indicated that only 24% of companies require some sort of mental health certification. And that lens, that awareness, and how it opened me up to being more sensitive to my team members is amazing. So the first thing is I encourage folks to get mental health certified, get your team members certified. We spend a lot of time at work. And so if we all are kind of having that lens to checking in on each other, I think that things can improve. Can I ask you, where was that seismic change though? Because five years ago, if you were to brought up mental health in the workplace, it would be brushed off as uh, you know what like I said before you know uh, just kind of a uh, we're not dealing with that here you deal with that on your own time but now it's really a part of the workforce and what what marked that change do you feel I think we know, Chris. I think the pandemic definitely definitely exacerbated um, this work-life balance meld. It used to be, you know, there was a fine line between when you, you know, shut down your PC or, you know, packed up your laptop. And I think today we realize that it is permeating all times and people are working from home now, right? So this flexible working has a positive benefit, but the negative side of that is that we automatically bring work home and, with us. Yeah, without a doubt. Any generations more prone uh, to stress at the workplace or stress at home, which carries over into the workplace and vice versa? Yeah, I think we see a lot of studies from like five, 10 years ago that make it generational and segment it. But I would venture to say that today it's impacting every single generation. Yeah. So, Jackie, so, you know, in your expertise, what advice would you give somebody who calls you and says, you know what, I can't deal with my job. I'm dealing with this, that. I go home and it comes with. What advice would you give them to be, you know, to not ignore what's going on at the office place, but to at least leave it at the door so they could go home and, and have a a decent life, decent enough that they're not overwhelmed with all of these thoughts. Absolutely. So in my book, Give Me a Boost, I put some tips forth, but I'll just highlight some of them. I think the first one is protect your energy. It's one of the amazing resources today that we don't have to pay for. I mean, Chris, we're paying for water now, yeah. but you don't have to pay for energy. People protect their purses and their wallets. They check on it, you know, more than they do their energy. And your energy is what's going to fuel you. So that's step number one I would recommend. Definitely protect your energy. Um, the second area that I would recommend is around managing your time. So your time is a valuable commodity. If you are in an employment relationship where you're the employee, take ownership. Have a conversation with your leader to say, help me figure this out. Because guess what? Your leader is also having those same balance concerns and they will be very empathetic. And if you're an entrepreneur, 
and you're looking to do a better job at managing your time, I always mention DDD, do delegate designate. What do you absolutely have to do? What can you delegate to somebody else? And what can you designate to an outsource provider to free you up? And then Chris, the last area that I would recommend is sleep. Yeah. Sounds Sleep great in medicine. theory. <laughs> that sounds great in theory, Jackie. <laughs> I mean, but let me tell you something. Sleep is medicine. And yeah. I know they recommend six to nine hours, and it really depends on the person. But I would venture to say that getting a good night's sleep is the best thing you can do for yourself to be more productive and be able to handle the day. I couldn't I couldn't agree more about the whole sleep thing. I mean, it really is essential. I get no sleep, so I look for other avenues of making sure I take care of myself. But uh, thank you, Jackie. Really great to talk with you. We really appreciate it. That's Thanks Jackie Taylor, me. an entrepreneurial wellness coach and founder of Business Boost Society. And you see her book over her shoulder, Give Me a Boost. There it is. Best of luck to you and thanks again. Appreciate it, Jackie.